Yeah, that's his vehicle, Dust, over there. He's right there, he's right there, dude. Come here, come here. Oh, here. dude. Oh, get ready, level. Yeah, I'm getting up on the building. Oh, shit, shit, shit. He doesn't see me, he doesn't see me, he doesn't see me. I will light him up if he looks dope. Shit, Woo! night! Good shit, dude. That was awesome. Got another one, got another one, got the driver. Do I have to hit him again? Rip. Or we're good. Oh, we're I good. got, no, you're good, you're good. I just killed the driver, he got out. Nice shit, dude. Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I've been given the opportunity to show you an exclusive first look at vehicles in Squad. And for those of you not familiar with Squad, this is a highly realistic yet accessible online first person shooter that allows you to experience massive scale realistic warfare. And for the longest time we've had these large beautiful maps, but we haven't had any vehicles to move around them. So there's been a lot of running in Squad, a lot of sore fingers from holding down that run button. But finally with the inclusion of vehicles, the games are now starting to play out the way that they were originally intended to. Fast vehicles allow for flanking routes and heavy armored vehicles pose big threats on the battlefield that infantry have to coordinate in order to take out. And this bad boy here is the BTR. Not only does it serve as a personnel carrier, but it packs a punch with a fully automatic explosive round cannon. Not only is it impervious to small arms fire, but the eight wheels allow it to move around cities incredibly fast. But not quite as fast as the armed technicals. These trucks mounted with machine guns on the back are incredibly fast and also offer a huge amount of firepower. They're very exposed, but also a lot of fun. These guys take that slow, methodical infantry warfare and add a bit of chaos to it, able to get behind enemies, flank them quickly, and then get out of there before they have enough time to react. Now, of course, those vehicles are faction specific, and if you're playing as the US, you get access to the Humvee. This one definitely offers a bit more protection, but you're still not impervious to infantry threats. Granted, sitting in the gunner seat behind an armored 50 cal serves as a bit of a confidence booster. Three, two, one, fire north. And as much fun as a show of force can be, you still have to use these vehicles tactically because they are very susceptible to RPGs. In addition to that, drivers and passengers can be shot out through the window, so generally speaking, you want to use them for transportation and a little bit of heavy firepower when necessary. Like real warfare, strength in numbers certainly applies, and having a good infantry presence around your vehicles is a great way to keep them protected. Now what modern battlefield feels complete without these giant transport and logistical trucks? These are basically used for everything in the military, hauling troops and cargo, and they're used for the exact same thing in squad. As you can see, I'm getting a lift here in a transport truck, but there's also logistical trucks that look just like this, and those can be used to resupply forward operating bases. And that's actually a very important aspect to the meta of squad, and it makes actual transportation vehicles play a very big role in this game. So if you actually like hide out on a roadside with an RPG in the forest and you take out a logistics truck, you could have just taken out resupplies for a forward operating base. And this is going to be a very cool and important aspect of the way that squad plays as a game. Now each vehicle in the game has a ticket value. When you die as an infantry, you lose a single ticket for your team. However, if you lose a vehicle like that giant BTR right there, that is 30 tickets lost for your team. Team. So you have to drive them responsibly and really use them to capture new objectives. And if they go down, that could be a huge loss for your team, not only in firepower, but also ticket count. And if you're interested in more of the details of the logistical system, I would recommend checking out Squad's latest update blog as it has a lot of details on like how many points each vehicle is worth 
and how long it takes to respawn a vehicle if you lose one. Not to mention the aspects of respawning and rearming dependent on logistical trucks resupplying bases. So a lot of cool details there that actually facilitates realistic sort of battle plan scenarios. And it's really cool that you can disrupt them in the same way that you would real life. Now this map in particular looks stunning at this time of day. Uh, they have upgraded the Unreal Engine with this patch to 4.12, and this is gonna take advantage of all kinds of new DirectX stuff and optimizations and allow for the truly massive scale that Squad is taking on. They're going to allow for 100 players in multiplayer servers. And this new map here is going to be a prime example for that because it is huge, very big, very wide open, and it has three BTRs on one side at the start. The openness of this map makes staying in buildings extremely valuable, especially when there's fast vehicles moving around. Hiding in the forest isn't necessarily the best option. You become very vulnerable to snipers, where buildings all of a sudden become the best defensive measure. Big fields and stuff like that is gonna make vehicles and smoke grenades absolutely necessary for crossing large open fields. And just in case you guys were wondering, gunner and driver are separate positions in the BTR. So communication between driver and gunner is essential. Drivers cannot get a third person view of the vehicle, so they won't be able to know what's going on around them and they're gonna rely on their gunners and other passengers to tell them what's up. Storming right into the front with a BTR can be a lot of fun, but it's also pretty much the most dangerous thing you can do. If vehicles are not properly supported by infantry on the ground, taking out other infantry threats and looking at angles that the vehicles can't necessarily be aware of, then they're not going to succeed. Despite their size, BTRs can still be taken down by handheld infantry rocket launchers, and it doesn't take all that many. At the moment, armored vehicles don't take more damage depending on where they get hit, but that is an intention for the final product. And I gotta say the effects of BTRs catching on fire after they get hit with one rocket is just really freaking cool. And especially when they try driving away while on fire. A flaming BTR going down the road is kind of crazy to see in the middle of all out warfare. Now, as if vehicles, a new map, a new logistics system, updated uh, Unreal Engine, and tons of other stuff wasn't enough, they've also added new weapons to the game. We have the PPSH-41 submachine gun. This little guy packs a punch, fires incredibly fast, but you're not really going to want to use him too much at further ranges. For ranged combat, we have two new versions of the G3. At the moment, it only comes with iron sights, but we'll have to see if there's going to be any red dot options added. And then, of course, there's the Woodstock SKS, again with iron sights if you want that true authentic feeling. They've also completely replaced the US soldier models and they look extremely good, very, very high fidelity, just like all the other models in this game. Overall though, the Squad Alpha version 7 is such a complete update to this game that it really does play out differently than it did before. Vehicles are such a big new element to the game, they change up the strategy, they change up the pacing and it really is like playing a new version of the game. If you haven't played Squad in a while, now is definitely a time to come back to it and if you've been holding off on getting into the early access of Squad, now might be a time to check it out because it is a much more feature complete game. I'll also be giving away nine full Squad keys on Facebook today so keep your eyes peeled for that. And once again there's so much information with the new patch including a whole host of UI updates and cool uh, configurations and stuff like that. If you want to know more you can check out the squad website there's also a link to the squad steam store webpage in the video description as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you next time this is level cap signing off